which the nafs desires for the purposes aforementioned. Remember, Sakhi, name of Allah Ta'ala, just like Adel, just like Halim, Subhana, Inna Allah Ta'ala, Sakhi, Yuhibbu Sakha. Verily, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is Sakhi, and He loves what? Sakha. He is munificent, Subhana, and He loves munificent, Subhana. And it's these things, these are the reality of why we ever sit inside of circles of knowledge. This, yani, we seek from knowledge to be somebody. I mean, let's not get this whole thing twisted. Yet yani, knowledge literally is not about knowing. Knowing is just a means to something else. Knowledge is about being. You know, one of the greatest in the beginning, Hilam, we spoke about Hilam. Look at, look at the great mother, mashallah, tabarakallah, of Sayyidina, Sayyidina Imam Malik ibn Anas, of the greatest that have ever graced the world, radiallahu anhu warda. Seven years of age, Imam Malik, and his mother is now tying the turban upon his head. And the Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, is going to his dars, seven. He's going to his first dars. And he sits, the dars he's going to is somebody called Abdurrahman ibn Hurmuz. Abdurrahman ibn Hurmuz. Abdurrahman ibn Hurmuz of the Rijal of Bukhari and others. He's more often known as Al A'mash. Imam Al A'mash, that's Abdurrahman ibn Hurmuz. The Shaykh of Malik when he was seven years of age. Subhanallah. You know, one, once you know, one of the great Imams of the latter generation, and he, um, Sayyid Muhammad Ali al Maliki, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that he was speaking about this Rabbaniyah, the lordly nature. And he speak, especially the race to ulama. And he's saying the alam al rabbani he said the scholar who is Rabbani, you know the scholar who is Rabbani is, is despite his rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of knowledge and piety, he teaches children. Hakada. That's the alam al rabbani Rafdum, he'll teach a child a ba. Ta. That's why people who go to the desert, as many Buddhists have, and they see Murabd al Hajj or Haddad Amin or what have you, it's beautiful to see them. These are Imams who have the entire tradition inside of their head. Yani. I mean, ulama stood at their feet as true pupils, as true students. We know people who've studied upon Murabd al Hajj, what's called Khalil. And if Faqih, you used to do Khalil once, you've memorized it once, this is their great book in Maliki Fiqh. People studied upon Murabd al-Hajj not just once, which makes you an alim, a Faqih, four times upon Murabd al-Hajj. And every time they study upon him, it's like a different world. That they with the great Imam radiallahu ta'ala anhu warda. Yet you will see him teaching a child, a ba ta tha a u i ba bu bi ta tu. Yeah, the basic way we sort of read and we articulate the language, subhanallah. And so, Abdul, so here Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala is going to the great Abdurrahman ibn Hurmuz, seven years of age. His mother is tying the turban upon his head and then she says these beautiful yani, words. She says, ta'allam min hilmihi qabla an ta'allam min ilmihi. She says, you take from his hilm before you take from his ilm. You, now it's about the character before it's about the knowledge. And that's really, really important. You know, those Imams, radiallahu anhu warda, he said, well, I stayed, I sat with Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, and he said, with Imam Malik, 20 years with Imam Malik, two years in knowledge, 18 years in learning from his character. And he said, I wish I'd spent all of it learning from his character. Not even the two years taken from the knowledge of Malik. There's 20 years studying the great Character that Imam Malik ta'ala inherits from the Prophet وسلم, through his transmission. You know, like Maghrib, you know, we just prayed Maghrib. And the Fuqaha differ as an example. You know, before, you know, after Maghrib Adhan, before the actual Farad of Maghrib, is it a Sunnah or is it not a Sunnah? Or often, scholars are differences of opinion. You know, the Prophet وسلم, would tell us, Raka'atani qabla al Maghrib. Raka'atani qabla al Maghrib liman shah. There's two rak'ahs before Maghrib, there's two rak'ahs before Maghrib for whoever wants. Between every two adhanes, between the adhan and the aqamah, there's two rak'ah for whoever wants, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say. Yet yeah, Imam Malik, yeah, he Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, and he sees this as something that is what is merely permissible and is not something that you act upon. Hakada Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, and hakada the way of the people of Medina. They don't pray two rak'ah before the farad of Maghrib. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala enters into the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yadhan goes and he goes into the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa waiting for somebody to call the iqama. And then there's a little child there. And then the child looks at Imam Malik and he says, Alayhi tarka'ah. 
<laughs> you're not going to pray. You're not going to pray some rakah there. So Imam Malik, Allahu Akbar. Imam Malik goes into prayer and starts praying to rakah. People enter into the masjid, they're astonished. Shuf, what, what's Malik doing then? Malik praying to rakah. We've never seen it upon Malik. We've never seen it upon Ahl Medina, the Imams of Medina, praying to rakah before Maghrib in and of itself. Imam Malik finishes and they ask Imam Malik, Kaif, yeah, Imam, how is it you're praying to rakah before Maghrib? And Imam Malik says simply, oh, the boy, he asked I'm not going to pray to rakah. And what I fear is that your muqiyama, I'll be of those, either qila lahum irka'u, la yarka'un. The verse in the Quran, when it said to them, irka'u, raka, irka, pray, la yarka'un. They don't pray. That verse of the Quran, look at Malik. The child just said, I'm not going to pray to raka. And on the basis of him saying that, he understands something else. That Allah Ta'ala could take him to account under the rubric of the verse, when it said to them, pray, they don't pray. And we have to understand that. Remember, there's not a book that has been written about Futuwa. There is not an illusion of the Imams in their poetry or the likes to Futuwa say that the meaning is character. It's about forging impeccable and beautiful character. That's what everything that we do must conspire towards.